In this section I'm going to be talking about price action. As you can see I have no indicators in this chart. I'll only be dealing with price in time. All right? Every analysis should always start with simple price action. Volume profile and uh, other tools or other indicators can be helpful, especially the volume based indicators. Those are great. But first you need to see what the price is doing. Only after that you can build on this information and start using some of the indicators. All right, but first you need to know what the price is doing. And then you build on top of that. So in this price action section, I will show you what to look for in the charts. And first I'll start with uh, telling you how the markets actually work. As I already said in previous videos, markets are controlled and manipulated by big financial institutions and they control the prices. And there is one thing that those big financial institutions have in common. And the thing is that they control massive amounts of money, which they need to place in the market. It's not easy for them to enter a market with such a huge position. So they need to enter their positions in smaller parts. So imagine, for example, a bank like Goldman Sachs or some pension fund who wants to allocate insane amounts of money into market. Let's say that uh, they want to uh, go short on the euro dollar. All right. So those guys need to do it slowly. If they do it fast, then they'll basically start a strong sell off and they won't be able to enter their positions, you know, in the sell off. So they want to enter their positions slowly without alerting other participants without anybody knowing. And they do that in rotation because they can easily hide in rotation. So this is the reason why rotations are that important. And this is the reason why the first thing I look for in the charts is the rotation. Because in most rotations, big institutions are building up their positions. We don't know if those positions are buying or selling, but we know that something is going on in rotation. So that's why rotations are that important, because big institutions accumulate their positions there. And it doesn't really matter if you look, for example, on a 30 minute chart or one hour chart, the time frame doesn't really matter because institutions also work on different time frames, you know, so they can, for example, operate on 30 minute time frame as well as on daily or weekly time frame. All right. So always look for price rotation or for sideways price action in the time frame which you trade. All right. So that's the rotation. And what happens after big institutions accumulated their positions? After that, they start strong selling or buying activity, like aggressive buying or selling activity to push the price upwards or downwards from the rotation. This is where they make their money. All right. They make the money when the price is moving. So first they enter their position. Afterwards, they initiate a trend. So always there is a rotation in which volumes are accumulated. And from this rotation, the price goes into a trend, uptrend or a downtrend. And this is how markets work. Most of the time it's just rotation followed by a trend. And that's it. Accumulation followed by a trend. Then again, accumulation and a new trend. What usually happens is that the volume accumulation takes more time than the trend. This is quite common. If you want a strict definition of how rotation looks like or how sideways price action looks like, then uh, I have sort of a rough definition for you. When there is a rotation, then uh, the price candles always almost overlap. So for example, if you look into this rotation, you can see that the candles overlap each other. There are no sort of gaps. But afterwards, there is a trend and the candles don't overlap each other. For example, in this place, 
they don't overlap right here they don't overlap or for example in here the candles don't overlap or mostly they don't overlap this isn't a hard rule for you but this is something how you can roughly tell if it's a trend or no when you spend some time watching the charts then it will be easier for you to make the distinction this is another trend area this is another trend where the prices don't overlap all right but for example in here the candles overlap or in here they overlap or you can look in this whole area more or less the candles overlap each other so this is a rotation so if the candles overlap each other like this that it is a rotation if they don't overlap then it is a trend so before you this is the euro dollar daily chart starting in uh, 2014 and uh, I would like to show you how I analyze the markets and uh, how I see the charts as far as the rotation and the trend is concerned so let me show you in this chart how the rotations are almost every time followed by an aggressive trend so let's start in here right there this is a rotation most likely sellers were accumulating their selling positions there afterwards they started this downtrend this is a trend all right You can see that it's a really aggressive downtrend, really strong one. What happens next? Another rotation. And then from this place, after the rotation is over, again, there's a trend development. After that, it's sort of harder to read because there were rejections of lower prices which indicates aggressivity of buyers rejecting the lower prices and when something like that happens uh, this means that the trend could be over if you see rejections of lower prices which go against the downtrend all right so this was the first sign of the aggressive downtrend ending if we go further uh, then you can see that it's a bit harder to read in this place right there it's sort of up and down situation the price is getting basically nowhere and then there was rejection of higher prices really aggressive one and afterwards there was a rotation another rotation in here and some strong selling activity so again you can see a rotation followed by trend right then a rotation in here followed by a strong trend development strong buying activity then there was a rotation the buyers were adding to their buying positions and afterwards again they pushed the price higher into an uptrend the uptrend is not as strong as for example this downtrend because this was just crazy all right but still it is an uptrend is aggressive buying activity which occurred after this volume rotation so what happens next is rejection of higher prices sellers rejected higher prices and funny thing they reacted to this rotation so those sellers were defending their selling positions and they push the price downwards from this area another interesting thing is that as soon as the price hit uh, this area where the buyers were accumulating their buying positions before they pushed the price upwards then those buyers started to buy again and they defending their buying positions and from this place they pushed the price upwards again then there was another rejection of higher prices and then a little rotation 
followed by a trend then a little rotation followed by a trend activity those trends are not as significant because if you look in a longer term like this then basically the whole year was a one long rotation compared to the previous year when there was a trend all right so you can look at it both ways you can either analyze the whole picture or you can look more into details so let's go back and let's see what happened what happened in here was quite a long rotation and then selling activity after the rotation then buyers were pushing the price upwards but what happened is that those sellers who were accumulating their selling positions there in this rotation started defending their selling positions when those buyers pushed the price in here into this area so what happened was that those sellers started selling aggressively to push the price into a downtrend and this is where those sellers started making money all right the sellers who accumulated their selling positions there so this is where their positions started making money after that basically nothing really significant happening as you can see the candles overlap each other the prices go upwards downwards upwards downwards but there is nothing really significant happening there so this basically could mean that strong sellers or strong buyers are accumulating their positions in this rotation area and this is exactly what happened a long rotation and after that start of really strong uptrend and one thing which usually happens is the longer the rotation the more volumes got accumulated within the rotation the more positions got created within the rotation and the stronger and the longer the trend after the rotation will be this is really important so when you see a rotation which takes a long time this is a rotation which lasted half a year and then you can expect strong trend development you don't know if uh, the trend is going to be uptrend or downtrend but you can expect a trend all right so it's not very wise to trade for example the strategies that always aim to the center of the rotation because the longer the rotation the higher the probability that there will be a strong trend like in this case that was a crazy trend um, there is one more bonus thing it's not really related to the topic of uh, this video because uh, this video should be about rotation and trends but there is one pretty significant thing to notice and the thing is this gap gaps like that usually get filled I'm not talking about stocks right now because it's quite common to have gaps like that on stocks but if you have a gap like that on Forex which is running 24 hours every day five days a week then having a gap like this not covered is a strong sign that there will probably be a strong trend so what usually happens is that the price in the next few days covers the gap all right covers this area what I mean by covers means that for example the price goes downwards and then upwards so then the gap is covered there is no hole all right there is no gap but when the gap doesn't get covered in the next few days let's say in the next week then you can expect a crazy trend all right so this is just the bonus I wanted to share with you since I saw it right there on the chart but let's go back into the main topic which is the rotation versus the trend all right so there was a long rotation from which strong trend started you can also notice that within the trend 
there are places with rotation. All right, rotation in here, followed by a small trend. So you can either look at it as a one strong trend, or if you zoom a little bit in, you can see that there's always a rotation and then trend activity. A rotation, trend activity. Rotation, trend activity. In all those rotations, buyers were adding to their buying positions to make more money from the uptrend. All right? They are not really able to enter their positions when the price is moving aggressively in the trend movement because it is too fast to enter a big positions, but they can do it in the rotations. All right? They can add to their buying positions in those rotations. So, what happens next? Longer rotation followed by trend, not really surprisingly, all right? So, another case of rotation followed by a trend. If we go further, then you can see new rotation, but in this case, what happened? The buyers weren't adding to their buying positions, but sellers took over, and in this rotation, sellers started accumulating their selling positions. They were accumulating their selling positions for three months. One, two, three. All right, three months of volume accumulation. When there is such a long volume accumulation, you can be sure that there will be another trend. In this case, strong downtrend. What happens next is a rotation. Nothing significant happening there. It seems that sellers were adding to their selling positions because there was another selling activity there, but there was a rejection of lower prices back into rotation. Nothing really significant happening in here, and again, a long rotation. In case like that, you can be almost sure that there will be another strong trend. Because if you look at the big picture, like this big picture, this long rotation, then this is a crazy long rotation. So, uh, currently, what I expect is a crazy trend. A really crazy trend. You can also look at it this way, because there really wasn't any significant trend in this whole area. Yeah, the price goes downwards a bit slowly, but this is nothing really significant. It is nothing compared, for example, to this downtrend or to this uptrend. All right, so currently it's just a matter of time before strong buying activity or strong selling activity starts new trend. This is what I expect. I don't know when uh, this will happen. I guess that it must be soon, because the rotation is taking place for a really long time. And I'm pretty sure that the trend will be a killer. It will be a strong trend. Alright, so um, that's just how markets work. Rotation followed by a trend, then rotation followed by another trend. Alright, this is what you should look for when you open any chart. You should always mark the places with rotations and with trends. This is the first thing to look for in any chart. The most important thing for me. Even though my preferred method is using the volume profile, this is the first thing I look for. Simple price action and rotation versus trend. All right? Uh, let me show you very briefly another trading instrument and another time frame so you can see that the logic is the same for all trading instruments, doesn't matter if it's euro dollar or if it's futures or if it's indices, it doesn't really matter, all right? So uh, in this case, I picked US dollar, Japanese yen and uh, 30 minute time frame. So um, those are 30 minute candles and uh, you'll see that the logic is all the same. So well, let me show you some examples. For example, in here, there is a rotation.
followed by a trend, followed by a strong buying activity. Then there is a long rotation followed by a strong trend. Then there is a rejection of lower prices which indicates that the downtrend in this case could be temporarily over. Then there is a rotation and a trend. Then there is a rotation and a trend. All right, so it's always like this. Doesn't matter the trading instrument, doesn't matter which time frame you use. All right, so make sure that when you make your analysis, when you look in the charts, you always think in these terms, in terms of rotation and the trend. Always ask whether there is a rotation or if there is a trend. Always ask how long the rotation is taking place because if there is a long rotation, it's most likely that there will be start of trend. And if there is a long trend, then there will probably be a rotation. And the first sign that the trend is ending is a rejection, aggressive rejection. So if there was a rejection of lower prices like this one, aggressive one, then the trend most likely ended and there will be a rotation. Alright, so that's how I read the markets. That's how I use price action to read the markets. Those are really the basics and a thing which you absolutely need to know and apply in your trading.